Hey guys. Today I am going to do something that I have been wanting to do for such a long time. If you don't know, I live in DC. DC is special for a few reasons, obviously, but one particular reason, the 1890 census survived. It didn't all survive, only a few pages survived, but those few pages happen to be for the streets that are in my neighborhood. So I thought that I would take you on a little walking tour of some houses that were around in the 1890s, which is pretty much all of them in this neighborhood, um, and tell you the stories of some of the people who lived here. The DC census in 1890 is special for a few reasons. First of all, it's 1890. So most of the 1890 census didn't survive the infamous fire in the Department of Treasury, but a handful of pages from 10 states and DC did survive. So it's just a super unique glimpse into the year that none of us know much about. Second, if you've never seen a page of the 1890 census, go check them out right now. The 1890 census is not like any other of the US federal censuses. Every family has one page for themselves or every household has one page. So you get some really unique answers. It sort of reminds me of censuses in early England and Wales, if you've ever seen those. So it's just different than all the other federal censuses and it's really interesting to read. And third, this is DC. So the people who lived here in 1890, especially in this neighborhood, were A, fairly well off, and B, had really interesting jobs. These are jobs that you wouldn't see anywhere else in the country, to be quite honest. So I had a ton of fun looking through this, and I hope you will too. So let's go. Harry Fisk lived at 1435 R Street and Harry worked as a theatrical manager in DC. He started off as a treasurer at the Opera House and eventually worked his way up to manager and it would appear that he was a really well-respected and loved man within the theatrical community in DC. Now, right next to Harry Fisk at 1433 R Street lived a Mr. James Barnes, and James worked as a clerk in the general land office. Now, this one really got me excited because you know how much I love using the GLO to find land patents. At 1419 Q Street, we have a 28-year-old Joseph Rose, his wife, and a 9-month-old son. Joseph worked as a botanist for the Department of Agriculture. A few houses down the block at 1425 Q Street, we have two families living there. The Gist family is headed by George, who worked as a clerk at the Treasury Department, and the Sloan family is headed by Charles, who worked as a clerk at none other than the Census Office. houses down the street at 1451 Q Street lived Harry Rogers and his wife Grace. Harry was born in Naples, Italy, and this one really got me. He put his occupation as quote unquote promoter of inventions. Now what that truly means has been lost to history. If you have any idea, please let me know in the comments down below.
further down on Q Street at 1325, we have the Lucas family headed by Frederick Lucas, who worked as an osteologist at the National Museum. And this is a perfect example of why I love the 1890 census and the way families wrote in their own responses. Instead of writing male, Frederick put his gender symbol. Frederick is one of my favorite people I've come across in the 1890 census. He dedicated his life to conservation. He rallied behind sharks when the world was afraid of them. He was one of the leading experts in seal fisheries in the Bering Sea, and he referred to whales as his warm-blooded cousins of the ocean plains. He was an incredibly humble and dedicated man, and he eventually became the director of the Museum of Natural History in New York City. Next door to the Lucas family, at 1327 Q Street, lived a widow named Caroline Peters and her children. Caroline seems to have invited her sister and her sister's children to live with her family, and she simply put her occupation as lady. Now I love that because, at least for me, uh, when most of my family, if not all of my family at this point in history were living on farms or in small towns, you never see lady, you only see housewife or at home. So I thought this was really interesting and giving me a glimpse into the higher society that I don't see in my own genealogy research. A few more houses down at 1305 Q Street lived Otis Mason and his family. Otis worked as an ethnologist at the Natural History Museum. In 1896, he headed up a project to document through the creation of plastic molds the appearance of a number of Native American tribesmen in traditional war attire. Although in 1896, society was a bit less choice with its words and described them as savage red men in primitive attire, nonetheless, it was still a valiant effort by ethnologists at the time. If we head on over to 13th Street to the house at 1718, we find Robert Wynne and his family. Robert indicated on the census that he worked as a correspondent, but that is only the tip of the iceberg of what Robert would become. Robert Wynne would go on to become the Postmaster General in President Roosevelt's cabinet in 1904, and by 1906 he was Consul General to the US Embassy in London. When the family moved to Britain, they became true socialites. His wife Mary was presented at Buckingham Palace, and even their children were featured all over in the newspapers. This guy was, um, touch. he's famous on Why Instagram. He famous? He's becoming a Finfluencer. I just saw a news article about him. 